Now, when you create a new print, one of the first thing you, things you typically do is create test strips. And so the time will automatically generate test strips for you. So at the main menu, you can see here this is the top level menu, we press D for test strips. And you have a couple of options. The first one um, is A, there are two modes, it's called cover or individual. Cover is your classic test strip mode where you start with a strip of paper and you expose the whole strip and then you cover up one part of the strip, you make an additional exposure, you cover up the next bit, you make an additional exposure and you cover up the next bit and you uh, keep repeating that until you've exposed all of the tiles of the strip to the degree that you want. Um, the test strip here is specified in stops, so this says the base exposure will be two and a half stops and the step for each, each, each point on the strip will be 0.2 of a stop. Now we can change those by pressing B. So let's say we want our strip to start at one and a half stops and we want the increment to be half a stop. Um, so it's now one and a half by a step of a half. And as per the edit menu where you press hash to go to the execute, it's the same with the test strip menu, you press hash to go to the execute menu. And it says we are executing a test strip um, with the current exposure being one and a half stops and we're in covering mode to remind you to start exposing the whole piece of paper and cover it up as you go. So this exposure is going to be one and a half stops, which is 2.8 seconds. So let that do its thing. Now the next exposure, remember we started at one and a half and our step is two. So this exposure is going to represent two stops. Now remember we've covered up, we've now, because we've done the first exposure, we've covered up the first part of the strip and we're now exposing all of the strip except for that first lightest tile. Now two to the power of two is four seconds, but we've already exposed 2.8 seconds. So the additional exposure required is just 1.1 seconds. And off we go. Now the third tile goes by an additional half stop. So there's two and a half stops. Uh, two and a half stops is 5.6 seconds. We've already done four seconds of exposure. So the additional exposure is 1.6 seconds. And off it goes. The next step is three stops. And so three stops is eight seconds, but we've already made 5.6 seconds of exposure. So the additional exposure required to make this tile is 2.3 seconds. Etc. And you continue that until you either run out of tiles on your test strips, or it'll reach. It'll do uh, up to eight tiles in this test strip, test strip generator. When you're sick of it, you can press A to reset or restart it, and it goes back to the beginning of the test strip generation. So that was the quickest way of generating a test strip in terms of the exposures, because the total time that you spend exposing paper is the the time of the darkest or longest exposure on that test strip. The issues with that though are that if your test strip is fairly long, it will span quite a large part of your print and the, the, the correct exposure that you're looking for may not be on the part, of te, or the part of the test strip that has the part of the image that you want to evaluate with that, that test. So for example, a typical strip you might be looking to find an exposure that gives you just the right amount of highlight density and if the correct exposure is in the shadow, then it's not going to tell you anything. So we go back to the test menu and we press A to go to individual mode. And this mode means that you're making a separate exposure for each tile of paper in your test strip. You don't, you don't make a progressive exposure covering it up as you go. Each piece of paper is exposed only once on its own. So same thing as before, one and a half by a half stops. So the first exposure, as before, is 2.8 seconds. We let it go. And then the next step, one and a half plus a half is two. And remember, it's getting the whole exposure all by itself. So this is four seconds straight off. So that's the second one. The third step, two and a half stops is the next, next point we're up to. And the whole exposure, two to the power of two and a half is 5.6 seconds. And off it goes and makes that exposure. So when you're in this mode, you have to insert a fresh piece of paper under the enlarger for every single exposure. And once you've made the exposure, take the, paper, take the exposed piece of paper away and put it in a dark place. And then of course you develop all of those tiles individually. And if you put them in the same part of the image, it will tell you exactly what you want to know about that little part of the image.
Now the reason you use an f-stop timer is because you intend to build up a complex print program which has many exposures. It'll have a base exposure and some dodging and some likely some burning as well. So starting at the main menu we have a fresh, a fresh exposure or a fresh program with no, no nothing in it just yet. We can go to the main menu and then into the edit menu and here it says well the base exposure is two stops. Now we have up to eight steps in each program and you can select those steps by pressing the number keys one through eight. So one is always your base exposure, two is the one after it, three is the one after that, etc. And by default, everything except the base exposure says zero. And that zero means no change with respect to the base. And so therefore all those zeros are currently not actually exposures at all, they're just placeholders. So at the moment we have a single exposure of two stops. So we'll leave that alone. And say we want to have the second exposure to be burning in the sky by one stop. So what we do here is we're now, there's the base exposure at one, here's the second exposure at two. We edit the second exposure and we say one, zero, zero, because that's one stop, press enter. And now so it's, it's plus one. That means, plus means it's a burn, it's additional exposure of one stop. So that means the base exposure is two stops and the sky will be an additional stop, therefore it will be a total of three stops in the sky. And then our third exposure, we might want to say that we're going to dodge out some a face, for example, an eye. So we might want to take half a stop out of that. So we press B to edit, we say five zero to make half a stop, and we press hash to negate that number. So it's now minus a half, and press D to enter that in. So now we have a dodge because it's a minus. It's a it subtracts exposure from the base. So going back to the beginning to review, we've got a base exposure of two, a burn of one, and a dodge of half a stop. Now it's a bit hard to remember what you're going to do at each of those steps, especially when there are eight of them, and especially when this might be a print program that you define once and then come back to a year later. So we're going to change these textual descriptions. And the way you do that is you press A to edit the description. So B obviously edits the second line, which is the exposure. A edits the first line, which is the first exposure. Now this is the text editing mode, which if anyone had an old Nokia phone and remembers the multi-press method of entering SMS text, that's exactly what's happen happening here. So what we might want to do is say it's called print, so we say P1. Um, the hash button changes case. So I'll press that once. For an R, I press twice, sorry, press three times. Uh, an I, three times, an N, and a T. I can press zero to get a space. And I might say it's, uh, there might be a number associated with this print, I'll put a date on it. So to change into numerical mode, we press star, and we'll go 2015-0814, D to enter. And there is a description for our print. Now that, that text gets stored with the base exposure. So now we go to the second one, and we remember this is burning the sky. So we press A to edit that, and we go B, lowercase, U, oops, R, N, space, uppercase, two, three, four for S, lowercase, okay, burn sky. Enter. Um, and so now we've got the print name, Burn Sky, uh, and we'll call this this third one Dodge Face. So we go Edit, and we go D, lowercase, and just so you get it wrong and you, you mistype, you can press A to backspace. D O D G E space. Oops. Dodge face, enter. So now we have three steps to our print. There's the name of the print, burn sky, dodge face. So assuming that's everything we need to enter, we're not gonna enter all eight steps. Remember we can always press hash to go to execute the, the exposure. And in the execute mode, you can tell that it's execute not edit because it has here the actual, the linear time that it's going to, going to be exposed for. And because this is the base exposure, it tells you the description of the base exposure which we've entered the description of the print. Now this is where the numbers start to become a little bit confusing. 
Remember our base exposure was two stops. Now you'd expect two to the power of two to be four seconds, but it's not. The base exposure is now actually only 2.8 seconds. The reason for that is because we've got a half stop dodge that's going to occur on the third step. So what we're really doing here is applying a base exposure of one and a half stops, and what was going to be a dodge is really a burn later on. Um, so effectively, you know, if we're dodging out a face, you can imagine that is a burn to every part of the print except for the face. So here's our two becomes 2.8 seconds. We allow that exposure to occur. And now it says burn sky. Now remember that the base exposure is two. There's one stop of burning to the sky, which means the sky exposure is eight seconds. Two to the three is eight. The base exposure, we've already had four seconds. Well, we, we, we will have had four seconds once the dodging has occurred. Therefore, an additional four seconds are required to bring the sky up to its three stops. And so we let the four seconds of exposure occur. So obviously during this exposure, you've got every part of the print covered except for the sky. And now we're up to the dodging the face. This is where we bring the 2.8 seconds of exposure up to four seconds of base. So this is the exposure where the face is covered and every part of the print except for the face gets an additional exposure. That brings what was the base exposure back up to its four seconds. At that point, our print is complete. And obviously it says program complete and it goes back to the beginning. Now, at any point during this execute menu, you can press B to skip through exposure steps, to skip over them, to go to the next stage. Uh, and of course, you can press A to reset the whole program and start from the beginning. And you can pause exposures with the exposure button. You can, even after you've partly executed it, you can skip a step. And the other thing you can do is you can use the press as a direct replacement for your start stop button. Now the foot switch is wired directly in parallel with the press on the rotor encoder. So the expectation is that if you're doing a complex dodge and burn, you will have both of your hands occupied with dodge and burn tools and you won't have a spare hand to turn the enlarger on by pressing any of these buttons. So you get all the tools in your hands, you line them up, and you turn the exposure on with your foot and off it goes and you hopefully you get it right. Now there's one restriction on dodging and that is that remember it changes the base exposure to be what we said the base exposure was less all of the dodges that we're going to perform later on. That means that obviously we can't have a negative uh, base exposure. That means that the total amount of dodges that you enter cannot amount to more than the, the, the base exposure. An f-stop timer is it allows you to very simply scale a print uh, if you know the additional exposure required to go between particular paper sizes. Typically the, uh, the exposure ratio relates to the paper area ratio, um, but there are there's some subtle differences that relate to your, your, your enlarger height. Uh, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go to the I.O. menu and I'm going to load from slot number five, which is the program that we previously defined. And so here it is, there's a base exposure of two stops. We're gonna burn the sky by one stop and dodge a face by half a stop. If we go to the execute menu, remember those numbers, it's 2.8 seconds, four seconds, and 1.1 seconds. Now, if we go back to the main menu, go to the edit menu, I happen to know that for my enlarger, that if this is the, the right exposure for an eight by 10, I want exactly two additional stops to make a 16 by 20 inch print. So I'm gonna edit that two and make it four, because of course four stops is two stops more than two stops. And we go to the execute menu. So having added two stops to our base exposure, everything becomes four times longer. So our base exposure that was 2.8 seconds is now 11.3 seconds, that's four times longer. And we'll skip that. That first burn that was previously four seconds, you know, it took four seconds up to eight. Now this burn is 16 seconds, that's four times longer. And the third exposure, the, the 1.1 something seconds, 1.17 seconds, once it's four times longer is 4.68 seconds. So by making that simple change, just we change, all we did is in the edit menu, we changed one number in the base exposure. We didn't have to make any changes to any of the other exposures because they're all relative. All we have to do is change that one number in the base exposure, and when you then 
compile your printing program, the timer will compute for you new times in seconds that will produce you the exact same exposure at the larger paper size. And so that allows you to experiment with your prints in a smaller size, and once you decide that you like them, you can print them as big as you like, as long as you know how much additional exposure is required for your larger paper. And that's something, obviously, that you can calibrate out fairly easily using either test strips or a step wedge. If you're printing with a fibre-based paper, you'll have noticed that uh, it has a particular tone when it's wet, and then once it's dried down, it gets darker. And so it's very difficult to evaluate your prints while they're wet. So you've got a couple of options. You can either dry every single test strip before you look at it, which is painfully slow and time consuming, or you can actually measure and calibrate out the amount of additional darkness or tone that you get when the paper dries down. You can measure your dry down factor. And it's usually a factor in stops. And so the timer can deal with that. In the config menu, um, one of the settings is the dry down. So for example, I might calibrate a particular paper as having a dry down factor of 0 0.05 stops. So we'll program that in. And we'll go to the uh, execute menu here. So you can say you've got a simple exposure of two stops, which is four seconds. And by default, what will happen, we're not in dry down mode and it's four seconds. You can execute the, the exposure and it, that's how long it will take. Now, the idea is that if you've come to your final, uh, your final print program and the print looks just right when it's wet but you know that once it dries it'll be too dark what we do now when we produce the final print that we're going to actually keep we press the D button and you can see there's a D in the corner of the display indicating that we are now in dry down compensation mode and you can see what's happened is it's subtracted a certain amount of time from the exposure what it does is it subtracts the dry down correction factor that we've specified from the base exposure so our two stops has become 1.95 stops, and of course, two to the power of 1.95 is 3.864 seconds. So once we've arrived at our complete print that looks good when it's wet, we apply, apply the dry down factor, perform our exposure, and this exposure is the print that we're going to keep. And once it's processed and dried, it should look right, or it should look while dry, what the earlier test prints that we made looked like while wet, and you can find that um, by experimentation using the test strip generator. When you're designing your prints, you may not want to waste all your paper doing endless test strips one after another. And it's often easier to get the print into the, ball, the correct ballpark first using a meter. And this, this meter is a TSL-235 light sensor that we plugged into the metering port at the front of the, the timer here. And we activate the meter by entering focus mode. So you press focus mode, it turns on your enlarger, and the idea is that you place this light meter on your print under the enlarger and you make measurements in multiple locations on your print that tell you the amount of light arriving uh, in, the, in the highlights, in the shadows, in the midtones, etc. And what you'll need to do is you have some paper calibration information that you will have gathered using something like Beyond the Zone system uh, and you will take these meter readings, you'll compare them against the paper curves that you've measured both you know, using your meter and a step wedge uh, and a densitometer and using all of that information you can uh, take the meter readings run some numbers and from that decide upon both the contrast that you want to print with and also the number of stops that you want to program into the timer as a first approximation for your print. Uh, as you can see here it's reading currently about nine stops that nine is not calibrated against any particular reference uh, it'll be specific to the meter that you get uh, in theory they should be about the same but there's no guarantee of calibration from the factory if I move it up close to the light source, you can see we're now reading sort of 14, 15 stops. That's about the maximum that this one reads. Bring it away, it goes lower. If I cover it up with my hand, you can see it goes down to sort of nearly, down to about zero stops. Um, and as I said, that, that zero is not um, with respect to any concrete uh, calibration point. It's just an arbitrary, uh, arbitrary number. And obviously that arbitrary number will be baked into your BTZS um, paper calibration results.